The paintings of artist Stanley Spencer exert a strange fascination more than 60 years after his death in 1959. Some of his most famous works portrayed stories from the life of Jesus, set in contemporary Cookham in Berkshire, where he was born, lived and mostly worked. Here is the artist in 1952, reflecting on how the spiritual and the mundane were often one in his paintings. I was very young, you know, from my years, even when I was 20, I, was, I think I was like a boy, I probably was. Uh, I would be there and I would mix this drawing of, doing a drawing of the place and the children in it. There was this kind of religious significance in the life there, in that place, and a kind of longing to be joined and one with that wonderful religious atmosphere. And I would as it were, keep these two feelings in my mind. I would be all the time switching from one to the other, rather, and rather hoping, you know, like when you look at two spots long enough, uh, they, they join together and become one. Stanley Spencer. Well, now a new exhibition at the Stanley Spencer Gallery in the village of Cookham puts a spotlight on the artistic talents and influences of his first and second wives, Hilda Carline and Patricia Priest. Love, Art, Loss, the wives of Stanley Spencer pulls together works from their own collection and from the Tate and Southampton City Art Galleries. Sean Pattenden is an author, artist and illustrator who is herself fascinated by the art of Stanley Spencer and who has been to see the exhibition. Um, Sean, he has a reputation of being quite a complex character. His relationships with these two wives in his life are quite complex in their own ways. Can you give us an idea of the story that this exhibition is telling? The story is um, one of Stanley's obsession, really, his obsession with love and his obsession with God. And as we heard from the clip, they fuse. And his obsession with taking over something um, and devouring it <laughs> until, until it sort of um, oh, can't function anymore. So the first thing we see is an idea of Hilda, the first wife, whom he married in 1925. And the actual first thing that we see is a sketch of him. It's not of her, but it's of him. So we know that this is very much his vision. Um, and so you say that we sort of go into it chronologically. What yeah. do we know about Hilda and what does this exhibition tell us about their relationship? Well, Hilda was an artist too, and they met, they both studied at the Slade, and they met through artist friends. And originally, Hilda was courting Gilbert, Stanley's brother, and Stanley, and she made a choice at one point, and it was Stanley. Stanley was obsessed with her, I think, from the moment go. She served him soup, and that was it. So she carried on painting for a small while, but what a lot of people have said is that she really did stop painting really? professionally. Once, once she was married and started having children. Do we get a sense of her art, though? We do. One of the great pictures in this exhibition is the self-portrait, where she is looking... There's almost a defiance, but there's also a very strong sense of pride. Her paints are in the corner. She is gazing directly at the viewer, and she is wearing this beautiful amber necklace, which we see in the exhibition as well. It's displayed because her daughter, Shirin, has lent it to this. So, you you know, you get a real sense of these are real people living real lives. Um, and what does the exhibition tell us about the style of Stanley Spencer's work at this time when he's in the relationship with Hilda? Well, there was the obsession, as I say, with her, but what he wanted to do was deify her. So, say, God is getting fused with the domestic and marriage and the idea that she was his ideal. So there are paintings of domesticity, which she was obsessed with, and there's tiny details and there's textures, there's clothing, there's hair. There's one sketch that's there of Hilda with her hair down where you start to see that the cracks are showing, though. And no words are spoken, but that speaks volumes. And there is a look in her eye that we kind of revisit later. Interesting. Well, he did transfer his affections to Patricia Priest, the woman who became his second wife. Yes. Different personality to Hilda. That relationship didn't go smoothly either, did it? No. He married Patricia four days after the divorce was granted from Hilda. Hilda felt forced into the divorce. Patricia was a very different person, where Hilda was considered and quite shy at points, deeply religious and devout. Patrice was out Patricia was outgoing, she was confident, she also had a lesbian lover, Dorothy Hepworth, who she was signing her pictures of and trying to pass them off as her own. She was a complicated but 
really quite attractive personality in that sense. During their marriage in the 30s, they did this famous series of fairly graphic, I think it's fair to say, nude paintings, including the double nude portrait, the artist and his second wife in 1937. Now, that painting isn't in the exhibition. But what can you tell us about these works and what do the works tell us? Well, they were truly shocking at the time. And as explicit as they are, they are as impotent, if you see what I mean. You, Stanley, in these pictures, there is a portrait where you're seeing just the back of his head and a tiny bit of profile, and you are seeing Patricia fully naked. And this isn't a Rubens naked. This is a, an older woman laid out, and they both don't know what to do with each other. They're not looking at each other. It's the most unsexual <laughs> nude portrait you could ever see. And it shocked people at the time. It was truly groundbreaking in that sense. He was being as honest as he could. Wow. Their marriage came to an end as well. I gather Pat Patricia refused to divorce Stanley. So where did that leave him? She started looking after his financial affairs. In the end, he gave her his house. She let the house. She gave him a shed in the back to work from. That didn't work out. In the end, he rented a bedsit in Swiss Cottage in 1939 with two women who didn't want him. And what he wanted was both women to love him, and in the end, he had neither. And, of course, this whole exhibition's been taking place in Cookham, where he lived. Going round it the other day, presumably there were people who, who are from the village as much as people coming in from outside. What sense did you get of the significance of the location for this show? Enormously. And the people that run the uh, gallery are the friends of Stanley Spencer, so they're volunteers who've lived in the village all their life. And so if you get into conversation, which you naturally do, they'll tell you where Patricia lived, They'll you can see some of the places that Stanley um, painted by the Thames, by the High Street where he painted Christ carrying the cross. So it's very much somewhere where you can go and then revisit and just feel the atmosphere of Cookham. And it's real, you know, the people come alive, which is so good about it. Fascinating. Uh, Sean Pattenden, thank you so much for kind of bringing the exhibition to life for us. Love, Art, Loss, The Wives of Stanley Spencer is at the Stanley Spencer Gallery in Cookham in Berkshire. And you'll be glad to know it's on until autumn next year. So plenty of time to plan a trip if you think you might like to go.